This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. Okay, with the juice and the coach, Bob Costas back at our studios in Manhattan. We'll talk a little bit more about the Jet game in a bit. But with Aguiar attempting that field goal, which was good, though it was nullified by a penalty, you have to wonder whether the great career of Pat Leahy, one of the truly great kickers of his time, is now winding down. He has not hit a field goal from beyond 40 yards all year long, and he's missed some close ones in crucial situations, and maybe this is the early indication. But first now, let's take you off to Arrowhead for the big game of the day in the AFC. The Broncos and the Chiefs each come in at 7-3, and three, tied for the top, top spot in the AFC West. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Marty Schottenheimer, 1-7 lifetime against Denver. Remember, as the Cleveland coach, he lost those two AFC championship games against uh, the Broncos. Now here's an interception early with Casey driving. The Steve DeBerg pass is picked off by Wyman Henderson who had stepped in front of J.J. Burden. Nice 53-yard return led to a David Treadwell field goal and a 3-0 Denver lead. But here comes Derek Thomas for the second of his two sacks on the afternoon so far. And they have sacked Elway five times in the first half. DeBerg back to the air, throws into double coverage. Tim Barnett makes the catch. They're going more and more to this young man as their number one receiver. He goes 63 yards to set up a touchdown four plays later, which will be scored by Christian Okoya. Watch him just power his way across from seven yards out. Kansas City took the lead at 7-3, to three, but Gaston Green goes 60 yards a bit later. This is the reason why, as we said earlier, Bobby Humphrey just can't get back into that Denver lineup despite the fact that his holdout is over. Gaston Green, the speed back they've never really had in recent years, goes 60 yards for the TD. And as we were speaking, Kansas City got a field goal by Nick Lowry, so the game is now tied 10 apiece late in the second quarter. OJ? I said the amazing thing in this game is uh, Gaston Green. You think that John Robinson let him get away. They can use a running back with the Rams. Uh, he's been noted to be a speed straight ahead running back, and he showed a lot of instinct on that run, uh, on that run a lot of natural instinct. One thing you got to remember is uh, over the last two years, the Broncos have not been a good second half uh, team. They blew eight halftime leads last year. In one game this year, they lost their lead at the half. The intensity's up in this game. This is like almost like a playoff thing. You can see both teams trying very hard, very aggressive, tackling some, some bad plays, but a lot of hard, aggressive plays. This game's a long way from being over right now, and, and you can tell they're playing for the division lead. Both teams are really going at it. The game in Pittsburgh might be over, all things considered. Steelers are 4-6, and six, though they won last week in overtime at Cincinnati. Redskins, of course, trying to make it 11-0 and leading at halftime at Three Rivers 17 to nothing. Mark Rippon threw an 11-yard touchdown pass to Art Monk. He also threw a 63-yarder to Monk early that set up a Gerald Riggs one-yard touchdown run. Chicago is at Indy. Those ever pesky Colts had a 7-0 lead at one point on a Jeff George touchdown pass to Jesse Hester, but Harbaugh ran six to tie it, and now they just added a field goal, and so they lead 10-7, to the Bears do, late in the second quarter. Minnesota at Green Bay and at Lambeau Field. This one is tied up 14-all just before halftime. The game you're watching, the Jets at New England. The Jets trying to put last week's disaster against the Colts behind them and leading 14 nothing at the half. OJ? And they're doing what they should do. I mean, they're a better team than New England, but New England, you know, they beat Houston at home and the Jets are playing up there and bouncing back from that defeat after I said they would win 10. You know, I'm happy for the Jets. Yeah, you claim they would get a wild card, they would go 10 and 6, but what they've done is they've played up to the caliber of certain competition, Buffalo, the Bears, for example, and down to the caliber of other opposition. Remember, they barely won at Indy. They almost blew the game at home against the Packers, and then they did get burned by the Colts. Well, they're an improved football team, and they're winning the day. That, I mean, the Jets are. Anyway, they're an improved team, and uh, I still think they may make the playoffs. Okay, two more scores to throw your way. The Bengals and the Eagles now have gone to the half at Veteran Stadium, and this game is tied at seven apiece. Esiason threw a 16-yarder to James Brooks. McMahon countered with a 10-yarder to Calvin Williams. The game even up at seven. And Tampa is at Atlanta. The two and eight Buccaneers trail the five and five Falcons, 26 to nothing. Just a few ticks of the clock left before halftime in this one. We step aside for a commercial break, and when we come back, we get some opinions from Bill Parcells about what.